हेलो ट्वेल्थ क्लास स्टूडेंट्स टुडे इन दिस वीडियो वी विल कंटिन्यू आवर प्रीवियस चैप्टर दैट इज ऑर्गेनिज्म एंड देयर पॉपुलेशन इन दिस चैप्टर वी हैव स्टडीड आर वेरियस डेफिनेशंस रिगार्डिंग द पॉपुलेशंस डेफिनेशन ऑफ द पॉपुलेशंस फैक्टर्स अफेक्टिंग द पॉपुलेशन नाउ इन दिस वीडियो वी विल लर्न अबाउट द इकोलॉजिकल एडाप्टेशन ऑफ द पॉपुलेशन और द लिविंग ऑर्गेनिजम्स ओके सो if we see ecological adaptation then first of all we have to classify the organisms present on the earth you have studied very well about the classification in 11th class so uh, if we broadly classify the living organisms in two groups only plants and animals because you have learned there are five kingdoms of the living organisms present on the earth but if we broadly talk about the two groups that is plants and animals then we will see the adaptation how they live in the environment so first of all we have to see what exactly the adaptation is what is the meaning of adaptation different scientists define the adaptation in different way but in general terms if you talk about the adaptations adaptations are the changes or modification in the body of the living organisms that enables the organism to survive in its environment the environment or the place or the habitat where the living organism lives it has so many difficulties or there are various types of habitats are there so the living organism living in that habitat requires a special kind of physiological anatomical or morphological changes in their body so that they can conquer the problems that arises in their environment or their habitat so students we will see the ecological adaptations that means the adaptation in their ecological system which enables them to interact with their environment so first of all if we see the category of the living organisms then we will first of all talk about the adaptation in plants okay so uh, let's start the adaptation in plants first of all if we classify the plants on the basis of their habitat or on the basis of their ecological system there are four types of plants are there you have studied about them in 11th class also that is hydrophytes xerophytes halophytes and mesophytes halophytes these plants the third group is also known as mangrove plants mangrove plants or the plants growing in marshy areas also okay so hydrophytes plants they are also known as aquatic plants that means the plants growing in water or in the abundance of water they grow xerophytes just opposite to the hydrophytes that means the plants which grow in the scarcity of the water in desert area we can say mesophytes mesophytes are the plants which grow in the moderate availability of the water that means where there is no too much scarcity and not too much availability of water we can say them as terrestrial plants they grow in moderate availability of the water so students let's see one by one which type of adaptations are found in hydrophytes xerophytes mesophytes and halophytes so let's start or begin with hydrophytes hydrophytes are also known as aquatic plants because they grow in the abundant availability of the water just in mud or pond lake sea etc where there is abundance lake uh, abundant availability of the water so uh, regarding the hydrophytes we will study about their general characteristics that uh, what is difference between hydrophytes and xerophytes and halophytes etc and then we will see the classification of the hydrophytes also first of all we have seen the classification of the plants on the basis of their habitats four types of the plants 
Now one by one if you talk about the hydrophytes or the aquatic plants we will see how they are subclassified in different groups. Okay? So, first of all students we see the general characteristics of the hydrophytes plants. So, uh, if you take them in mind that the plants which are growing in pond or lake you will see that some of the plants are floating on the surface of the water. Some plants may be submerged in the water that have their roots inside the water as well as, as, well as their full body inside the water. Some plants may have freely floating and their roots are also floating in the water. Ok students, so they have general property that their leaves are broadly spreaded over the water. Second thing, they lack well developed root system because where there is abundant water is present and the main function of root is to absorb the water. So, they uh, the roots need not to spread very widely in search of the water because water is already in abundance there. So, they, they lack either they lack root system or lack, uh, root system is very poorly developed. Third thing is that their stems are hollow. Generally, arenchyma type of tissues are present in them. Arenchyma tissue that means tissue which have hollow spaces in them. Because the hollow space is filled with what, uh, with air and that air enables them to freely float on the surface of the water. Because they required oxygen or they required carbon dioxide for respiration as well as for photosynthesis, they need sunlight. So, their leaves must be there on the surface of the water. So, these are the general characters of the hydrophytic plants. If you talk about the presence of stomata in these plants, we see that uh, either the stomata are absent or they are poorly developed or they are nearly inactive in this case. Next, their important property is they lack the mechanical strength of the tissue. Because you have seen that the aquatic plants are not very hard, their stem or they, they are not woody. We can say that they are very soft, they can be bent or they can be broken easily. So, this is also an important characteristic of these plants. Next important characteristic of this plant is that their whole body absorb the water because they lack well developed roots and their whole body is in contact with water. So, their whole body including their leaves, stems etc responsible for absorption of the water. So, these are the general characteristics of the aquatic plants. Now, we will see the classification on the basis of their habitat. Now, we have seen that their habit, they have aquatic habitat. Definitely, if they are uh, aquatic plants or they are hydrophytes, they definitely will have aquatic habitat. But within the aquatic habitat, they have different different positions. On the basis of their position in aquatic habitat, we will classify them and we see here that submerged free-floating, amphibious and marshy, three types uh, mainly four types of the aquatic plants are there, submerged, free-floating, amphibious and marshy. Now we will see one by one that what is their meaning, which type of adaptations are present in them and what special characters they bear. So first of all students we see submerged plant. Submerged plants that means the plant which are present inside the water body. Now if the plant is present inside the water that means uh, there no part of their body is outside or on the surface of the water. The whole body of the plant is inside the water. We can see here that this type of the plants are known as submerged plant. These are present in the at the bottom of the water body. But now we can say that there are 
देर मे बी टू टाइप ऑफ सबमर्ज प्लांट रूटेड सबमर्ज एंड अनरूटेड सबमर्ज वी कैन क्लासीफाई देम इन टू पार्ट दैट इज रूटेड एंड अनरूटेड सबमर्ज प्लांट नाउ वाट इज देयर मीनिंग इफ द प्लांट हैव रूट्स दैट मीन्स इट इज अटैच टू द बॉटम ऑफ द वाटर बॉडी दैट प्लांट्स आर नोन एज रूटेड प्लांट और रूटेड सबमर्ज प्लांट बट समाइम्स द होल बॉडी ऑफ द प्लांट इंक्लूडिंग द रूट्स एंड शूट प्रेजेंट विद इन द वाटर बॉडी बट द रूट्स आर नॉट अटैच टू द सरफेस ऑफ द वाटर बॉडी इट इज नॉट इन साइड द लैंड और नॉट इन साइड द मड एट द बॉटम ऑफ द वाटर बॉडी वी कैन से दैट इफ दिस इज अ वाटर बॉडी देन द प्लांट इज प्रेजेंट इन दिस पोजिशन their root is present here and the whole plant body is within the water but that uh, body of the plant is not coming up to the surface of the water body it is inside the water only so two types of submerged plant rooted submerged and unrooted submerged now we will see the second type of the aquatic plant that are free floating plants free floating plant means students the plants which are floating on the surface of the water just like water lily lotus plants etc whose leaves are floating on the surface of the water again uh, you can see here that this type of plants are known as free floating plants you have seen this type of plants many time on the in the lake or at the surface of the pond water now again the free floating type of plants are of two types one is rooted free floating and second is unrooted free floating a rooted free floating that means the plant whose roots are present in the soil or mud of the water body and their body is on the surface of the water just like lotus plant if you talk about the lotus plant lotus plant bear this type of the characters this is our water body and surface of the water then lotus plant has its root and stem inside the water body stem and roots but its leaves are present on the surface of the water leaves and flower both are present above the surface of the water but its stem and roots are present inside the water stem inside the water and root inside the mud or soil at the bottom of the water water body so student this is first type of the free floating plants that are rooted free floating plants sometimes some plants bear their roots in the water not in the soil of the, the water body their leaves are present on the surface of the water body but their roots are roots and stems are freely floating inside the water body it do not touches the land under the water body that type of free floating plants are known as unrooted free floating plants or freely free floating plants that means they are not attached to the land they can easily move with running water or if there is a movement seen in the water body then they can easily move with the water is it clear students now we will see the third type of the plant 
दैट इज एम्फीबियस प्लांट्स इन एम्फीबियस प्लांट्स द प्लांट इज वेल अडाप्टेड विथ द एक्वेटिक कंडीशन एज वेल एज टेरेस्टियल कंडीशन यू कैन सी हियर द प्लांट लाइक दिस यू कैन सी इन दिस डायग्राम और इन दिस पिक्चर दैट द प्लांट इज प्रेजेंट इन साइड द वॉटर बट सम ऑफ देयर पार्ट इज अराइजिंग फ्रॉम द सर्फेस ऑफ द वॉटर द लीव्स आर प्रेजेंट ऑन द सर्फेस ऑफ द वॉटर बट देयर फ्लोरल पार्ट और स्टेम पार्ट इज अराइजिंग फ्रॉम द सर्फेस ऑफ द वॉटर देयर रूट्स एंड स्टेम इज ऑल्सो प्रेजेंट अंडर द वॉटर the roots are stuck to the mud inside the water body but their stem is rising that means some body parts is present inside the water and some above the surface of the water they are adapted to both the conditions that is why they are known as amphibious types of the plants amphibious that means students which is adapted for both the situations aquatic as well as terrestrial now in the fourth type of the plants that is marshy plant we can see uh, you know very well the meaning of the marsh we have studied about that marsh that means where there is plant presence of plenty of water and soil both so the plants which are growing in marshy areas is known as uh, are known as marshy plants you can see here these plants have a special type of roots that are that is mangrove roots that's why these plants are also known as mangrove plants in these conditions they have respiratory roots which can respire and second most important adaptation is that their stem is present above the marshy surface we will see uh, different types of adaptation in this so students we have seen mainly four types of aquatic plants that is submerged plant free floating plants amphibious plants and the last one is marshy plants now we will see the different types of adaptation seen in this plants so adaptation is present in different situations or different parts of the body so scientists have di divided these adaptations in main three categories the first one is morphological then anatomical and then physiological you have studied about morphology and anatomy morphological that means the structure which we can see from outside that means structural adaptation anatomical adaptation that means the adaptation present inside the body of the living organism or their uh, organ level modification that they have different types of organ for example uh, fishes have gills in order to adapt the aquatic conditions they possess the gills so students and a physiological condition physiological adaptations that means change in their so students now we will see the three types of adaptations in the aquatic plants that is morphological anatomical and physiological but students on the basis of the parts in the plant in which these adaptations are found again these adaptations are divided into three parts that is adaptation in the roots of the plant adaptation in the stem of the plant and adaptation in the leaves of the plant so roots stem and leaves these are the major three parts of the plant and in this portion the adaptations is found so we will study these adaptations in three parts all these three adaptations morphological in three parts that is stem roots and leaves again anatom anatomical will be in three parts and physiological also in three parts so let's begin the morphological adaptations in stem that is morphological adaptation
in stem of the plant or uh, first of all we start let's with uh, roots root system and then in leaves so in uh, roots we will see the very first adaptation found is that the roots are not highly developed or they are very poor developed so uh, roots are poorly developed because the main function of the root is to absorb the water but there is already abundance of water is present so there is no need of development of the roots second thing the root hairs which have the main function to absorb the water are not found in this uh, in the roots of these plants except the free floating submerged water plants only free floating submerged water plants roots have the root hair except that root hairs are absent root hairs are not found the second adaptation because root hairs main function is to absorb the water third thing is root cap is absent because a root cap is responsible for finding the direction towards the water so there is abundance of water is present so root cap is not found root cap that means the end parts of the root which have the ability to sense the water a root cap is absent because each and every side the water is present so no need of the uh, root cap generally the root is not found in this plant but if the root is present then adventitious type of root is present not the tap root only adventitious types of roots are present if present generally they are absent if present adventitious types of root is present so students these are the main morphological adaptations in the roots of the aquatic plants that is roots are poorly developed second they lack the root hair third thing that root cap is absent and fourth one is if roots are present then only adventitious types of roots are found and it is also found in free floating plants only now we will see the morphological adaptations in stem of the plant morphological adaptation in stem of aquatic plants so you have seen many times students that uh, if the aquatic plant is present there in side the water its stem is very flexible you can bend it easily it won't break so and their stems are not too much thick they have very slim very thin stem so the stem is the very first adaptation is they have thin and flexible stem because this flexibility prevent the stem to break down by running water if the water has to run very fast then the flexible stem can easily bend down in order to save itself 
and it is very thin to minimize the resistance of the water that is the reason behind being thin and flexible the second modification in this plants stem are that they have generally horizontal plant stem sometimes vertical is also found but many times or in maximum plants the horizontal stem is present so that it can minimize the resistance of the floating water so second thing is horizontal stem horizontal stem is present and if the vertical stem is present then it is very thin sometimes in many plants the stem is modified into runner stems or in rhizomes runner stem that means stem is attached to the surface of the water uh, surface of the ground inside the water but it is runner stem runner stem that means it remains attached to the surface of the mud or bottom of the water bodies so stem is modified into into runner stem so to prevent the damage in the plant and this runner stems are generally perennial in nature that means they do not destroyed in a single year they lives for more than one year so these are the main morphological adaptations in stem of the aquatic plants now students we will see the morphological adaptations in leaves of the plant first of all we have seen the morphological adaptation in the roots then in shoot and now we will see the adaptation in leaves of the plants so morphological adaptation morphological adaptation in leaves how the leaves are adapted themselves to live in the aquatic habitat so first of all we see that leaves have uh, leaves are narrow slender sometimes some plants have narrow slender leaves and some have broad spreaded leaves very large and spreaded leaf which enables the plant to freely float on the surface of the water so the first is leaves are wide leaves are uh, large or wide so they enables the plant to freely float on the surface of the water one important term is seen in this plants leaves that is heterophyly heterophyly or heterophyll that means the presence of two types of leaves in a plant in this terms a single plant bears two types of leaves just because one leaf one type of leaf is present inside the water and one is outside or on the surface of the water so the leaves which are present outside the surface of the water or outside the water they possess mesophyll characters that means the leaves like the terrestrial plants and the leaves which are present inside the water body they are very soft spongy and very flexible as they have to conquer the water current so student this is heterophyly heterophyly that means presence of two types of leaves two types of leaves are found in aquatic plants which enables them to survive in the water body in marshy plants the leaves are fully exposed to the air so they uh, purely bears mesophyllic characters in marshy plants
मार्शी प्लांट लिव्स बियर्स और शोज मिजोफाइटिक कैरेक्टर सो स्टूडेंट्स दीज आर द मेजर एडाप्टेशन इन एक्वेटिक प्लांट्स इन टर्म्स ऑफ देयर मॉर्फोलॉजी इन द नेक्स्ट वीडियो वी विल सी द एनाटोमिकल एंड फिजियोलॉजिकल कैरेक्टर्स ऑफ द प्लांट्स तो आई होप यू ऑल हैव अंडरस्टैंड दिस थैंक्स फॉर द डे